describe this with a judgmental attitude. There's lots of good things we do on screens. Our devices are very useful tools. There's a reason we use them, but that's a lot of time. And so I think it's important to keep in mind opportunity cost, which is a term that basically means if you spend your time and attention on one thing, it's at the cost of something else. If I spend two hours on Instagram, or again, in my case, eBay with doorknobs, I can't spend two hours learning to play the drums, which is one of my hobbies. I'm not gonna get any better at that because I just spent two hours doing this other thing, right? So in other words, we need to pay attention to what we're paying attention to because ultimately, that's what our lives add up to. Our lives are what we pay attention to because if you're only gonna experience what you're paying attention to, then you're only gonna remember what you pay attention to. So each momentary decision about how we spend our attention is how we spend our lives. And that, I think, is a big deal. So I like to think of a couple things here. I just alluded to this, but what are you or what am I not doing as a result of what I'm doing on my phone? Like, what am I not learning? What am I not experiencing? I bet you all have had experiences, actually, raise your hands. If you had an experience where you were technically with your parents, but they were not actually with you because they were on their phone and it annoyed you. Yeah? Thank you, yeah, right, like all of us. Thank you. So they think you guys have the problem. Um, and it's actually to the point that I think of, and this is a quote from John Haidt, who's a writer in this space as well, that smartphones are really experience blockers. Like if you're on your smartphone, you're not really experiencing what's happening. And that can have really devastating effects on relationships in particular, and a lot of other things. But the thing I really wanted to focus on with you guys is the idea that our brains are constantly actually changing in response to what we pay attention to. And I don't know that this is really, this is really paid attention to enough. So in other words, everything you put into your brain is causing physical changes in your brain. People used to think that once you became an adult, your brain didn't change really again. Like all your, your connections in your brain were set, all your brain cells were set. That's total BS, it's not how it works. We actually are constantly growing new neurons, which are brain cells, and we're constantly creating new connections between them. And that changes the physical structure of our brains. The most famous example of that was a study that was done on these London cab drivers. London cab drivers used to be required, I think they still are, to memorize the entire streetscape of London, which is thousands of streets, thousands of landmarks. They had to essentially become Google Maps. And they had to take a test called the knowledge. Like, I love British people. It was called the knowledge. And researchers decided to see if people who took the knowledge, who spent hours, months studying for this test, had any differences in their brains from people who did not. And they found that the area in the cab driver's brains that's responsible for spatial awareness, like navigating, was much bigger than it was in the people who did not study for it. Which is, to me, mind-blowing, because it means that their thoughts literally change the shape of their brains. Okay? So that is really important to know, because it means that you have to pay attention to input and make sure you want your brain to be changing in the way it's going to change. Because, again, it's not going to choose. It's just going to change in response to what it's exposed to. That's true for everybody, including adults. So please tell your parents that. <laughs> Pay attention to their brain. But I wanted to tell you that it's actually especially true in early adolescence and in teenage years. And I think it's useful for all of you to kind of know this so you can make some more uh, informed decisions about what you want to be doing with your, with your time. So you all are actually in a period of brain growth that's the most rapid since you were babies. When babies are born, their brains start to basically have this explosion of neurons, the brain cells. And they have an explosion of connections between the brain cells, neural connections. And it's actually way too much. So the average baby has way more brain cells and connections between them than an adult. Because it's too much for our brains to handle. So starting around like 10, like early tween years, teenage years, our brains start to prune these connections. We start to cut back on things that our brains decide are unnecessary. And what that means is that this is a stage in which your brain, you need to be really aware of what you're paying attention to because if you're not paying attention to something, your brain's gonna think it's unnecessary and get rid of it. If you are paying a lot of attention to it, your brain's gonna be like, oh yeah, I should pay attention to that. And that's really important and what it means essentially is that what you're doing like right now, as an early teenager, as a teenager, you're locking stuff in for the rest of your life. And this is a relatively new discovery and a new way of thinking of this. I don't think many people are aware of this. So just keep that in mind as you're deciding what to do. And in some ways that means that people who are early adolescents and teenagers are more vulnerable to stuff like technology addiction because your brain is still developing. Honestly, a lot of general addictions begin around this age as well because of this, what's called plasticity of your brain, this changeability of your brain. 
But it also, I think, is really empowering because it means that all of you actually are at a stage in your life where you get to decide what kind of brain you want to have. Like, way more than me or your parents because we are a little bit less flexible. I know I said we still are growing brain cells, but like, honestly, not as many as you. So you get to choose, and it's going to last for your life. Like, this is going to be locked in. So I really encourage you to start thinking about what kind of brain you want. Like, what do you want to be reinforcing in your own brain? And I asked myself this question when I was preparing for this talk today, and these are some things that I came up with. I mean, I want to be able to be able to focus, be productive, be able to remember things. Like, I want to have a lot of skills. I, I take piano and guitar also, so I want to be good at all my instruments. I want to be creative. I want to be able to think deeply, so then like not being totally distracted all the time and actually be able to have thoughts and like write about them and have a career as a writer. I want to feel relatively good about myself most of the time. Let's not aim for perfection, but like not hate myself. Um, I want to be a kind and good person, and I want to have healthy and fulfilling relationships. And I can tell you that that is, in general, not what spending a lot of time on our phones and apps is going to encourage, because those are not the motivations of the app makers. Again, they just want to make money off of us. So you can figure out what you want your answer to this question to be, but I think it's a really exciting thing to ask yourself as a young adult, like, who do you want to be, and how can you expose your brain to what it needs in order to be that.